Welcome to episode 24 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. My name's James. I'm Laurie. I'm Wyndham. How are we all? I'm all right. The autumn's arrived. It's, it's coming, isn't it? Yeah, the leaves yeah. are falling off the trees. And what does that mean? What, is, what, what does that mean? What else is coming? Halloween? Is yeah, that? it is. Yeah. I love a bit of that shit. So <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already Googling uh, wolf suits for my four-year-old daughter who's obsessed with werewolves and Michael Jackson. And, yeah, we need to figure out what the nine-year-old's wearing. I might wear a Stormtrooper helmet. But anyway, whatever. Just a helmet. helmet. Yeah. <laughs> are, we gonna have a ha- are we allowed a Halloween special this year? Oh, we have one last year. Oh, I had to really press gang that <laughs> sucker in, though, didn't I? <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. So we're kind of at the beginning of September, aren't we, right now? Yes. So our next show will likely be the beginning of October. Uh, go, maybe implies we're going to have a separate Halloween special. Well, yeah, we'll we'll do a Halloween special if that's what you like. Yes, <laughs> will we? Well, I don't know. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> anyone listening? Anyone got any Halloween classics? Any Halloween favourites? Please start writing in and giving us recommendations. That'd be really cool. Talking about writing in, nobody has. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think so we're all over the written word now, aren't we? In general. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so well, are we? Any video? Any um, voice recorded messages or anything? Like Nothing, I'm afraid. Oh. It's been a bit sparse, well, but it has been is. has been the summer, which means that um, you know people go and do other stuff, don't they? I suppose they do go and do other stuff. I went and did other stuff. Did you do other stuff? A few things, yeah. Good. Yeah, when uh, I did go and do other stuff. So there we go. Nice and serious there. We all did stuff. All right. Have we got any news? How's it going? I've got some news. Yes, wonderful. So, have you seen that the classic cartoon from our childhood, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, oh, right. is being redone? Animated? By, animated uh-huh. by Kevin Smith from oh. Jay and Silent Bob fame. Wow, yeah. He's chopsy. And apparently, it's going to be in like an anime Japanese style. Right. Ooh. So she has been running for about a year now, hasn't it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they brought that one back. I never knew she was back. A rerun or a remake? No, remake. I didn't know Yeah, that. I haven't seen it. But um, yeah, I thought that the same company would do it, but apparently not then. Mm. So that was that was an example of them coming up with a toy and using the cartoon to as a vehicle to sell the toy, wasn't it? That was Mattel. Yes. Definitely, yeah. It was, that was the thing. I think they were obviously they were pushed in tandem... But yeah, they had a very strong merchandise at the same time as the. I always wanted hit. to have Castle it. Grey School, but I got it. Yeah, I got it. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? <laughs> it was good until you get bored of it, and then it's quite bulbous. <laughs> right. It's just bulbous <laughs> in the house. But this is the thing. I mean, like, did it do any tricks? Uh, trap doors or hidden doors? I think there was a trap door. I again. think there was a really crappy trap door top right, and yeah. It wasn't so cool. I remember Skeletor's castle, though, however, mountain. was like twice the size. It was like, it's f- f- freaking massive. Um, but yeah, but I mean, like, with toys now, like my nine year old son, like I say, obviously I've been desperately trying to lump Star Wars on him. Like, hardcore. <laughs> Kids and toys, it's a, it's, we're in a very, very different world. I mean, like, the reprise of He Man, we're really hoping, hopefully, maybe our kids will get into it. I don't know if they will. I don't know. Maybe they will. I don't know. We'll have to see. But it just seems like all these things that we loved, you know, like Dark Crystal, which I'm sure we'll probably talk about yeah. in a minute. Such great, you know, such great artistry, original, great, cool stuff. And you'd think kids would just lap it up. But it doesn't... Well, it, anyway, in my experience, it doesn't seem... doesn't resonate with them the same way. way. Yeah. Kind of odd. It's much more this sort of YouTube channel yeah some guy's got a channel and just does random weird stuff that seems to be the the hit with kids or the latest app stuff like that it's like oh man is right. that the same is that storytelling because there was the um you had ram man ram man oh yes in, you did uh, and, and then you had that kind of second generation of toys where the chests spun round yes you had two options or the head spun round yeah that was all good stuff whereas yeah. now who needs that? I think I missed that on a lot of that. Did you? He ran stuff. Yeah. But I will say it makes it, it spares the bulbous objects around the house. <laughs> All right, you've got the news. 
Uh, it's been quite a while since we've recorded, so there's tons. There was uh, obviously uh, Stranger Things has had the season four signed off. Obviously, that's no real right. surprise. But season three, just a quick touch on that. You loved it, right? I did. Yeah, I thought it was really good. You've checked it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good. But they call it Stranger Things. So first season comes out. And yeah, it is Stranger Things tapping into all that retro. The the soundtrack's amazing. The opening credits, profoundly beautiful, wonderful. Uh, and, you know, it was an original idea. And then number two kind of did the same thing. And then number three... Again, kind of. I thought number three was very different. It was, it was slightly different because they did that sort of um, invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing. Didn't yeah, they? but they didn't really do much with it. But it was but good. It I was did a lot thoroughly funnier. enjoy it. I did thoroughly enjoy it, but I'm just oh, I don't know. There was quite a lot of that comedic bickering in the face of imminent death. Yeah, I'd which t- uh, after a while it got that a bit, bit grating. But it was nice to see Winona Ryder a bit happier for a change. She was a lot happier. She's yeah. like, I've had enough of this shit. I know exactly what's going on. Let's not bollock about. <laughs> yeah, she was really great. Hopper was really really great. Again, the kids really cool. I love the ice cream guy. Oh, I keep forgetting I his name, name, but he's yeah, I I adore him. So it's still a really 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 great show, but it just it. I, I, it's just too far gone now but maybe from that first series I don't know it could have been even more than what it is but anyway well if that was smash cool. hit success you got seven I must be happy with that yeah more news that I'm really excited about Mark Gatiss is going to make us a Christmas um, ghost story oh is which he which is really great I think it's probably an M.R. James story again okay. so that's quite exciting um, Peter Capaldi is going to be in it ah so that, hopefully, fingers crossed, that would be a good ghost story for us. Um, any more news from you kids? I've got another couple of bits. I've got it in. I've, um, I've got one. Go on. The latest and quite possibly the last Rambo movie's coming out. Oh, God, yeah. Another last one. Blood. Rambo Last Blood. <laughs> <laughs> so as the designated action correspondent, yeah. I'll, I'll give yes. that a watch and let you know. I can't when, when, when is that arriving? No idea. Yeah. I literally just saw a very brief... I think it's in a... I don't think it's very long actually. It might even be September. Right. Um, but did you see the last one? No. Uh, where he ends up in some Lao or somewhere like that, I'm not sure. Right. Just graphically violent with yeah. bodies disintegrating and stuff like that. So if that's the uh, the train they're on, it's probably about time it's the last one, isn't it? Right. And what? the difference between in Sylvester Stallone from Rambo First Blood Part 1 yeah. to Rambo Last Blood, <laughs> holy, don't do drugs. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. <laughs> they are physically distorting. There is this thing about aging. There's like there's some people that suffer chunk. And I'm not meaning like fatness. I mean they just go they well, like it's a chunk. Steroids. It's the steroids he's taken all his life. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. A dear friend of mine blames it on drinking. That can do it too? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. First blood though, that I was obsessed with that film yeah, when I was agreed. a kid. It's it was um, such a good film. Yeah. But uh, then Rambo, yeah, it all could, the whole tone of it just completely changes, doesn't it? And it well, becomes something else. It was one of those weird things. They changed his chest scars in Rambo First Blood Part 2. Oh, why? Well, so yeah. in the first one, he's just got lateral, a horizontal scar across both pecs. Uh-huh. And then in the second one, he's got kind of like, they're separated by the ch- press, uh, his chest bone. He's like, ah. changed. Wow, and you were taking notes on that shizzle. Well, it was one of those things you kind of go, it's such a memorable f- part of the first film when he has his flashback to being tied up in yeah, the oh, arm that's and right. the machete yeah, yeah, across yeah, his yeah. chest. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. You kind of go, okay. And in the second one, they've kind of done this artistic <laughs> sun spread. I want to look a little bit more perpendicular. No, that's not the right thing, is it? <laughs> that's very good. Very good. Perpendicular. <laughs> That's probably what he said. Yeah. Like he's a smart he guy, actually. We all think he's a dick. He's smart. He, well, he, he, he refused to let anybody else star in Rocky. He wrote it. And he said, no, if you're going to make it, I'm going to be Rocky. Exactly. But he slopped his guts out on that. So he wrote it. People were interested. Like, oh, yeah, okay, we'll take this story. But he's like, no, fucking boy, you're taking the fucking stories. And he had no money at all. He sold his dog. Kept going around like Colonel Sanders, and then uh, on the 150th, they went, Oh, right, then you can play blah blah blah. And then pow, Rocky, it's the title character. Uh, yeah, that's it, Rocky. <laughs> um, bit of other news so Peter Fonda 
passed away a couple of weeks ago. So Peter Fonda, who's he? Big legend, so Easy Rider, massive film that he did with Dennis Hopper, kind of changed cinema in a way. That was all part of the Scorsese years, Coppola years. It's a good film, isn't it? Yeah. But it just sort of changed and, and kind of gave new wind to young artists, young filmmakers, just saying, like, just fucking make it. If you've got a good idea, go and make it. So yeah, Peter Fonda passed away. Terence Dix passed away as well the other day. The Doctor so Who. So he was a uh, writer, a uh, script editor for Doctor Who in the John Pertwee years, so mm. in the 70s, um, and wrote nearly all, or about two thirds of all the Target novelizations of the book um, of the TV show. So in the 70s and 80s, again, Target would release like two a month. Um, wow. Yeah, and he used to write all of them. He's I'm assuming they were quite formulaic. Very formulaic, <laughs> you, you, you know. But he he was like he he helped to create what is modern Doctor Who, really. How we, what we see, you know, the evolution of the Time Lords, you know. The was it the introduction of the army and all that unit and all that? Yeah, stuff. all that kind of stuff. <coughs> so yeah, so he's gone. Uh, Pants. Um, uh, <coughs> Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are coming back for another Matrix movie. Oh crikey! Have that? That? I have I heard about this. Mike Wazowski brothers. Do we need another Matrix movie? Of course we don't. The well, first film happened. That was it that done. Was, yeah. Great concept. Great idea. Well, Thanks. they said that the concept and the idea is just as relevant today, if not more so, than it was back then. Right. And they're on their downers. So no, I don't. Know. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. All right. Is that it? Or we've got the clubs? Oh, I think so. You guys haven't managed to see. Well, actually, no. We'll, we'll probably touch on that later. The new uh, Tarantino film. No. 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 Yeah, and again, as I say, it's been a while, but the Banana Splits came out of a horror movie, which is which is quite exciting. The Banana Have you not seen the Banana Splits horror movie? No. Yeah, the Banana Splits Splits have got a horror movie. The for the Banana Splits of the it's 70s. Called, it's la, called the la, 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 that one. No, not that one. <laughs> what one? Yeah, oh, that one. What? Not the other blooming banana. Not like the cream-based banana. <laughs> So, yeah. Right, so there is a horror movie, what they've just made It's one. called The Banana Splits Movie, came out in July, and yeah, you know Fun House by Tobe Hooper? Yeah. I've, I've, it's got a similar gig to that, so you go to watch the, the, the Banana Splits, and then you get fucked up. But anyway, check it out. That's that. I, what's it called? Banana, Banana Splits, Splits the, the movie. movie. With that big furry dog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they drive around in the, those like beach buggy things. Yes. And it's a horror movie. Yes. Have you seen it? <coughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go in the beam. Mm. All right. Um, I'll kick us off. So I saw a film which, weirdly enough, I've, I've never seen before. Um, oh, oh, it's a lovely war. Oh, right. Um, Richard Attenborough. Richard Attenborough film. And I've seen the play. I've been in the play and I've directed the play once. So I knew the play. play. See the play, did, the you, play. did you write it? <laughs> didn't write it. Rewrote some of it. Um, but it's a remarkable film. But set in, uh, filmed and set and filmed in Brighton. All on the pier, All on the it? pier, which is now long gone, unfortunately. Burnt down, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but also cast, it had... Lots of famous people in it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, who's that really famous act- actor? That's um, from uh, the National, right? It's, it's actually outside the National. Come on, Gary Wilmot. <laughs> uh, it had Wendy Allnut, Colin Farrell, Malcolm McPhee, John Ray. Colin no, Ray that's Ray. a remake. Yeah, that's not the right one. Mm-hmm. I should have really written these things down. Lawrence Olivier. He Lawrence Olivier. It. it was brilliant. Oh no, it's, it, but it's just amazing and poignant and funny and inventive and clever. And the way they move between the surreal and um, you know the real, you know, um, hardship trenches and stuff like that is is brilliant. Yeah. So highly recommend that. Oh, what a lovely war! Yeah, there we are. Windy plops. So I, <coughs> excuse me, um, I watched. A Netflix original called Polar, which is Ooh. based on uh, a series of graphic novels uh, around this character called the Black Kaiser, yeah. who is a hitman, um, 
and the film focuses on the point where it's Mads Mikkelsen as the the lead character. He's, he's awesome. a, an international hitman. Yeah. Who works for a collective of international hitmen and women. Mm. Um, and the the company has a, a policy where everybody retires at fifty. And you paid into this pension, and there's these millions of pounds waiting for you when you retire. Only it's not that easy to walk away from that kind of business. So you just so, cap in your ass. Essentially, that's the premise, mm. and it's but because it's come from graphic novel, it's kind of got hyper um, accentuated violence and all that kind of stuff. It's good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Polar. 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 So I never yeah. even heard of that either. And you've got Mads Mikkelsen in there and all sorts yeah, of you've got stuff. Mads Mikkelsen, cool. uh, Vanessa Hudgens, Catherine Winnock, Matt Lucas. Right. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's good. Well worth watching. Polar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it has been a while, and I've re- I really genuinely have two. We'll just have one. Just uh, there's two really no, awesome just one. ones. Can I just talk about one? They just say the title of the other. Yeah, well then. Thanks. So I'll, out of these two, I'll plum for. 2017's You Were Never Really Here. Okay? okay? So that's... You've got your Joaquin Phoenix. All right? Um, and he plays... Effectively, he's kind of like a, a gun for hire, as it were. Like a contract killer. Yeah. Uh, he's got a lot of ghosts in him. Like sort of a disturbed past. And his contracting killering sort of specialises in lost children. Stuff like that. And I think quite early on, like... Uh, a what, Senate, killing lost children? No, sorry. Uh, revenge for revenge for trying to find lost kids and you know fucking up the people that have done it. And there's um there's like a senator or something. And one of his kids um is kidnapped, so he kind of takes on that job. And you're following Joaquin um through this, but rather than really sort of the plot as it were, it really focuses on him and his inner demons, and it's sort of what what makes it so great is just it's that real kind of cinema experience again you know where a film can sort of start eating you up and it all gets a bit blurry and so he's in these situations as it were you know just something quite innocent like taking a photo of these kids that need a photo taken of them or whatever but then his mind will flash back to a memory that he had and that will kind of sort of blur the lines again anyway proper proper great performances great soundtrack great film as I say it consumes you Proper, proper, proper mm. good cinema. You were never really here. And just the last one as well. Super amazing surprise. Sorry to bother you. Have either of you seen that? <laughs> oh no. my god! Sorry to bother you. It, okay, well you can tell us all about that next time. Spectacular. <laughs> anyway, all right, brilliant. All right, on the rocks. Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. <laughs> um, I haven't got anything this month. Jesus. No. Have you haven't got anything this, like, one, two months? No, I haven't, well, I haven't been watching a lot of stuff, really. Shit. I have. Okay, when? I always have. <laughs> um, the the uh, atrocious, awful Aquaman. Oh, right. Oh, right. Holy crap, that is a pile So why, because it comes as no surprise, I don't think, to any of us that it's a sack of shit, but why is it a so, sack of shit? It just feels as if so the only relative light in it is Jason Momoa. Uh-huh. But essentially the script is terrible. The editing, feel it feels like a film by committee. Right. And so nothing ever really sort of f- seems to follow the, the arc and a, a sensible story. And Which was one of the problems with Suicide Squad, and wasn't I think, it? I think they've kind of, they've evidently come to it much later than... Marvel did, yeah, and they did. I don't think when when you get to the end of Avengers, whatever the last one was, Infinity War, mm. when, as you then go back through those films, you can see they had an idea of what they knew the arc, right? Yeah, right yeah. from Iron Man, yeah, they knew where they wanted to go, and they knew how it all was going to fit in together. And I think DC have failed to do any of that. It's They've like they're just gone trying to figure out their shit, tone. We need to do yeah, this. Yeah. We need to do that. We need to do the other. And Aquaman just feels like the, whoever directed it had his film and then the committee went, yeah, you're going to have to recut that because we want to do a bit of this or we want to do a bit of that. So it just feels really disjointed, doesn't flow, the dialogue is terrible. You have big leaps of character development that 
you go, where the fuck did that come from? Right. And it's just really bad. And even to the point where the there's lots of um, CGI in it. Mm. And a lot of that is a bit like, oh my God. Bit punk. We know you can do better than that. Yeah. You just haven't got the money because your franchise isn't as successful or whatever yeah. the reason is. But it's just terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. Do they have gills? <coughs> uh, <laughs> so it's not like uh, Harry Potter where right. he eats yeah. the gillyweed and grows <laughs> gills. So no, I don't I think they just... It's just really... It's awful. I hated it. It was so bad. <laughs> Even the bit where um, they're underwater and they're kind of swimming away and then they kind of stop to go horizontal, to go vertical and it just looks really poo. Right. It's like, have you seen the... Um, oh, Christ. The Amazon... The new Amazon series with um, Legolas, the elf, Oh right, okay. Orlando yeah. Bloom and Tales Cara Delevingne. Mystery, whatever no, it is. Way, yeah. There, there are loads of fae in that, and yeah. they kind of constantly have to take off. <coughs> you just tell it's like somebody with a winch, and the actors yeah. are there going, "Wait a minute, wait a minute." Wait, uh, oh. <laughs> it's a bit like that. It's rubbish. Oh, Lord. okay. They are Aquaman. Don't watch it. Avoid it. Okay, um, <clears throat> Lori. Me, uh, I was touring actually for a while to put this on the rocks. I probably won't, but I just just say about like Tom York's animated thing. It's actually really great, so I won't do that. Um, Slaughterhouse Rules, however, turns out it's firmly on the rocks. <laughs> Bit shit. So you've got your Simon Pegg's in there, Nick Frost is in there, right? Michael Sheen is in there, yeah. Some young new actors, one of them. Oh, Finn good. Cole is in there from Peaky Blinders. That's it. What's yeah. it about? Uh, so basically, it's like this privileged school, some sort of shit kicker dude manages to academically get the chops to be allowed to go in there. So, for his mum, this is a big, big deal. So, anyway, he goes there, and you know, it's like a boarding school and all posh stuff and weirdos. And Slaughterhouse, as it's called, Michael Sheen is the principal, and they've got principals. So, you're kind of following this kind of school thing story. Ah. But then, just in the woods, there's fracking going on, which is a topic. That obviously oh, Jim so Jarmusch awful. tried, but they're doing it as well. Turns out fracking's probably not the best <laughs> area to go because it seems like you get shit shit stories from it. But anyway, the film takes forever to get to this point where there's something that the fracking is actually there's like a cavern, and then like all these demons inside the cavern come out and start killing everyone in the slaughterhouse. What makes it bad though is oh okay all right if it's a Sunday and you you're genuinely not doing any actually no not even that. It's just not worth it. It's just the editing's rubbish. The jokes are constantly repeating. Some of Peg's saying the same joke again and again and again and again. Was it funny the first time? No. Ah, borderline. But yeah, it's just the editing doesn't feel right. It's just, it, it's all kind of wonky, wrong. It's all, no, I was going to say it's all right. It's not all right. It's, a bit it's on the rocks. Yeah, it's on the rocks. All right. So let's move on to our feature, which is 2008. Okay, so, so we said 2008, so it, it, you could almost say th- this this category is about <coughs> when you're just about to propose to someone and shit goes wrong. What? Because they're both, both these films are that, aren't they? Anyway, yes, 2008, that was, that I was. I think that. he's going for the year first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, let's say, let me give you a bit of information about 2008. Right, so the news, there was a financial crash. Karen, oh, yeah. Karen yeah. Matthews, the mother of the kidnapped nine-year-old girl, Shannon Matthews, was arrested for organising her daughter's kidnapping. Yeah, that was fucked up. Boris Johnson became mayor of London. Yeah, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, look how that turned out. Um, popular culture, not much, apparently. <laughs> Wasn't anything there. TV, Grain Show was axed. Carol Vorderman quit Countdown. And Trevor McDonald quit News at 10. So there was a lot of loss there going on in TV. Goodness. Interesting what you say about cultural devoidness, because like when we were looking for films, it's like there, yeah, there's not really that many options. I know Let the Right One In is a good film of that, that that year, but there's not that much else I could really find. Yeah, in music. Well, this says it already. Uh, number three, only the night, uh, only by the night, King De Leon, Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends, Coldplay. Ugh. And then Duffy was at the highest rate, the highest Duffy. Album. What the happened rock to Duffy? Fairy. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke yeah. died, and Edmund Hill- Hillary. Ooh. And the top five greatest films were The Dark Knight, yeah. Kung Fu Panda, Wall-E, 
Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So the top three, though, is a good film. Yeah. I'm so, I, I keep desperately trying to get down on Nolan with his Batman stuff. Love the first one and second one. It, well, Dark Knight was one of the films that we didn't choose, but I thought was a, I, I really enjoyed the first Dark Knight before it all got too serious, really. Yeah, and I've, I've been thinking about this. If it was Dark Knight Rising that was on the teddy box the other day, and I was down on that as well because it's, it's almost like it's he, he was embarrassed that he's making like a superhero film. That is something. You can get caught away with that and go, whoa, whoa, I'm taking it too seriously. But actually, they are good films, aren't they? They are good films. They yeah. are good films. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're, they're made well. And Cloverfield was the other fil- film, which I went oh, to see at the right. cinema, which I quite liked as yeah. well. Yeah, that was good film. Yeah. And that, that franchise has continued in the weirdest way. See, yeah, uh, in, they in, in been a refreshing way, though. Yeah, they haven't been completely linear with theirs, have they? Exactly, gone, yeah. Okay, we've got this... We've, in one film, we've made this amazing opportunity for lots of different approaches. Yeah. yeah. Let's explore them all. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Which is refreshing and cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, let's have a look at our first film, The Strangers. Okay. Okay. Um, so, let's have a clip. I just want to tell you something. What do you want to tell me? You are my girl. I love you, Jimmy. What is that? It's okay, there's nothing here. I haven't heard a dog bark, a car pass. Nothing. All right, so it was released in 2008, directed by Brian Bettino, screenplay by Brian Bettino. Um, original title was called The Faces. Um, music was Tom and Andy. Tom, Tom and Andy. Andy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, budget was $9 million. And the box office, it took 82.4 million US dollars. Um, didn't oh, yeah. any awards. Mm. All right, so, Laurie, um, and just uh, some of the actors. Liv Tyler um, was Kristen. Scott Speedman as James. Speedman? Yes. <laughs> That's not a real name. <laughs> and that'll do, really. Um, and, Laurie, do you want to give us a bit of a synopsis? Yeah, so... Liv is a little bit, you, you see her whimsical at a, at a wedding, and her <laughs> fella is like, and he's not saying very much. He's like, what's wrong with fella? And they have a drive back home, and Liv's like smoking fags, looking wistfully out the window. What's going on? They get into like a little house, kind of in the middle of nowhere, it's like a secluded area. Liv's still doing her sort of stuff, and he's like moping. And then you learn to find out, which is actually kind of the, a big part of both of these films that we're reviewing, they were, he was going to engage to her and it, she kind of said, no, I'm not ready. And he was all heartbroken. Anyway, I think she needs some fags or something. So he goes off to get some fags. Um, but... Right, he, you tell her the whole story. Oh. <laughs> so but, um, they're alone in a cu- um, house in the country and people break in and terrorise them. They keep turning up and knocking on the door, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Is that Harry in? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, first memories. I saw. Uh, well, I, I was travelling across America, I think, and I was in a hotel, and I just was it a remote hotel. It. it wasn't. It was in a city, I think. Oh. But it was still spooky enough. It's bit. It really kind of freaked me out at the time. Mm. Uh, just um, you know, like the shots of the people in the masks out mm. of focus in the background and yeah. things like that. That was. I remember yeah. that made me very unnerved. How about you two? You seen it before? No. Never seen before. Me neither. What did you think? Um, it's one of those films that when, at the very beginning, when it said, this film is based on true events. Yeah, that was And it. then it says, but nobody knows what happened. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So what essentially they're saying is, they found, big spoiler alert here, they found somebody dead and another woman badly injured. Yeah. And they've made up the stuff before that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I always get a bit 
This is based on true events, but nobody really knows what happened. I get absolutely okay. furious, particularly if, <clears throat> if if this truly is based on a true event. That is the most unrespectful, naughtiest yeah. thing ever. That's an abhorrent, terrible, terrible thing for them to do. But you're right, it does open up with basically you, that they're dead and something's happened. So the moment I saw that saying, this is based on true, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go. They're but did they do Ill. the same with um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, and that wasn't based on true events. Yeah, it was yeah, based yeah. on a game which was completely different. As is this isn't. But, yeah, so but, it, ground, but it puts you, I suppose as a, a viewer, you're put into a position where you think, oh gosh, this could happen to mm, anybody. Yeah. So you are kind of on edge. And that's one of the things with these, again, these two films, that the premise, the, the purpose of it is to shit you up about being on your own yeah. outside of a urban population mm. and I think with American films set in America there is a genuine certainly from a British standpoint looking in yeah. you genuinely think well that could definitely happen <laughs> <laughs> not only could it definitely happen it almost certainly will happen Yeah. so don't go to remote places in America yeah the, the director on, on speaking to the director though he did admit so it's not really based on a true events he was just very much inspired by the Catherine Tate Manson murders and there's another couple of similar sort of sect or like you know like these the weirdos basically murders that he was inspired by so he yeah, said so was, you could say that um, Sam Salams was inspired by exactly, true events you know? yeah, exactly but you don't get this big thing right at the beginning uh, based on yeah, true no, that yeah, I think it was mate, wrong yeah. disrespectful I and, did and like, it automatically makes you think this is a marketing point yeah. Yeah, 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 I did like the fact it started with a lot of mystery. You know, you're wondering what happened, why they're, yeah, um, what's wrong with their relationship. And I agree, kind of, and, and you get so engrossed in that, yeah, that when there's by the time there's a knock at the door, it's a bit of a shock. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, and, I forgot and something else going on. In a current atmosphere where exposition is rife in almost all films, yes, they don't give you any of that. Yeah, and yeah, it's like, good. Very, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it does open quite well. And like you say about the, the creepy stuff, I think the way they do, you know, where she's just, she's, she's, she's had a smoke, he's gone, she's worried about him coming back. And then suddenly that... that sack face. Sack face steps out of, just in the around back. the back. Yeah. Beautiful timing. Yeah. yeah. blurry, can't quite see it. And she's just there. And you think she's going to turn around and clock him. Yeah. But just the moment, it's just beautiful timing yeah. where he's just gone back again. It's like, ooh, yeah, that's really, really well done. Um, as it goes on, though, it does get... They are borderline paranormal. Well, yeah, they keep I mean, vanishing. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there's, a bit of the, there's a bit of the car, and he, I think he's in the car, and yeah. she just, someone behind him puts a hand on his yeah. shoulder, yeah. and turns around, she's not there. And so that happens you can't a lot. physically move away <laughs> that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you, it, it, uh, it does a lot of that, really. But, but, but it doesn't start on. like that. No. It starts really quite cool, but then you, they keep cranking yeah. it up and just taking a little bit more liberty, a little bit more liberty. So, yeah. There was a, a lot of it, um, and I know it's that kind of film, and I know you have to adhere to certain laws which say if somebody keeps knocking on the door mm. and you're terrified of them, if that door creaks open, you have to open it, stick your head out, <laughs> have a look around. Whereas in reality, you'd kick the door shut and phone the police. Absolutely, yeah. She couldn't, could and she? I, and I get, I get that. I understand, but they, those tropes just wind me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, like I say, as it goes on, they do definitely start leaking in more and more. But that first knock on the door, <coughs> sorry, I think is really great because he's yeah, still there with her, isn't yeah. he? And yeah. She's like, is what, what's yeah. the name? Is Andy in? Oh, he's not here. And her yeah. face is completely in shadow. Yeah, because she's, she's t- taken the bulb out, hasn't she? I think. And then her That's response beautiful. again is just a little bit weird. Is is Andy in? No, no, we just said he's, he's not here kind of thing. And then she goes away. But then that when that knock comes back for the second time, it's like, oh, yeah, this is this is a really nice kind of... So what do we think about um, the performances, Liv Tyler? What, what do we think of her? So I have got here, Liv has good hip flexibility. All right. Uh, can you remember what... I can't remember what that was... Okay. <clears throat> no. There might have been a shimmy. I think there must have been a shimmy. I've got on that. Which gets a great performance, but then I've started putting, but very annoying and a bit whiny. 
<laughs> yeah. But that's a character. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a lot of it, wasn't it? There was a lot of it. I think I, again back to that. I think, I think whiny, it's, but she was being terrorised by people with masks. Yeah, yeah but who were I, definitely up to no good. But if that was Sigourney, if that was Ripley in there, <laughs> she would have stood for that shit, would she? Very no, that's good true. point. Yeah, I put. Yeah, why doesn't she fight back? She doesn't fight back at all. Not everybody's a fighter, though. No, but if you can't fight, then surely you would fight. Or Look freeze. That. Or freeze. Yeah. Or shimmy. Or oh, shit, and that was it. She tried to mesmerise them with her <laughs> hips. <laughs> and they weren't up for it. So you were said, I think she does a good turn on this one. And you said that it, it did quite well, actually, at the box office, didn't it? Yeah. It made a bit of money. So she... Uh, 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 what was it? The Lord of the Rings had finished slightly... Be- well, not long yeah. before this, right? So I suppose that was probably a bit of a draw to see her doing her thing. I think she does well. On his side, his acting, I thought he did really well. You start questioning... When he actually comes back, yeah. you like, are Is you involved? doing this? Yeah. Are you are you one that's setting this up? You're oh, really I didn't question up. that. I know oh, I, I didn't. It, 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 it's the film is definitely trying to make me think this yeah. as well for a good sort of ten minutes, right. and then you realise actually it's, it's not him. Yeah, I've, I've that was good. Suspicious of James. Yes, uh. is it Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, mm. so that this is based on true events. Mm. If you take that as okay, this is based on true events. You then. It's, that's one of the frustrations. It, it's trying to be clever with that marketing ploy. Yeah. And then you go, he wouldn't have been that suspicious yeah. in real life. He'd yeah. have gone, what the fuck is going yeah. on? Yeah. Wow, let's call the police. Let's go quickly. Come with me now, whatever. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So it's not, it gets in that little bit of Hitchcocky at one point. So again, at this point, it's all still really cool. Um, however, you know, when, when a car has got punctured tyres mm. and the tyres are let down. Is that it? You can't drive it? Yeah, no, it's completely... In films, bad. you can't drive it. Apparently. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's well, it, it is quite hard to drive, yeah, because especially in mud and stuff, we won't go anywhere. Well, that's very true. So, yeah, I was it muddy? Well, I don't know. No, not really. I don't think it was, no. It would have been hard to drive. It would have been harder to drive, but in light of scary people wearing masks, yeah, you'd have given it you'd a go. You'd have given it a go. Um, yeah. I thought the masks looked really effective. They did. Yeah, they worked really well. Yeah, and actually, th- this whole thing, it, because it, I, I know we're going to get on to Eden Lake. I watched this after I watched Eden Lake. Right. All oh, right. And it feels like a movie that knows what it is, understands what it's trying to do, even though the director's trying to hoodwink us with that. Yeah, it's a nice little bit of play. Yeah. It understands the kind of the tropes of it. And it delivers them up to the point it starts getting a bit supernaturally. Yeah, it it does its job quite well, I think. Yeah, yes. And and those masks and kind of people at different different, suddenly they're miles away, and then there's somebody over here. How many of them are there? Because originally it's just the girl knocking on the door. Yeah. And then there's the mask comes in the back of the house. Yes. Okay. There's two. And then there's another mask, and you're going, girl, girl. How many are there going to be? Yeah. But you get three. So you um. Where are we? So, I think the accidental shooting of his friend was quite a nice little idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then it all sort of cranks up this and that, and it results the, the the film's sort of climax is, I suppose, kind of the tone of this film. I suppose you probably wouldn't have expected that that ending. That no, that's a bit like hardcore. Yeah, it was a bit hardcore. Albeit, right at the beginning, it does sort of kind of say that that was going to happen. Uh, and then the two little kids turning up with their, their Bible bashy yeah, leaflets, yeah. their sort of um, crossing of paths, as it were, with the murderers was kind of nice. Yeah. And they said, I think, I think the murderers, as they're driving away, it's going to be easier next time, yeah. or we're going yes. to do it yeah, 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 next yeah, yeah. time, imply it's the first time that they've done yeah. this. And that, again, linking to the Charles Manson, sort of Catherine Tate murders. These guys that links them. very well to that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was all kind of fine. It's okay. What about yeah. the music? I put it that I thought it matched the matched the mood perfectly. Spooky and creepy. Yeah, so it does its job. There's nothing really sp- uh, particular about it, though. Mm. Right. Well, well, I think that that premise that when they've done all the terrorising, the mate's been accidentally shot. They tied and bound. They've tried to escape two or three times. Um, communications have been severed, all that kind of stuff, and then they're tied to the chair, and then the, and then she the says, thugs take their masks off. Oh right, yeah. And, and at that point, we all know if you see their faces, you're yes, fucked. yeah. 
and she's like, why, why? And then she goes, you were in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, that is it. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah. Which is the point, right? It's supposed to make us feel Yeah, that can happen to any... anyone that's not a yeah, motive. Yeah. Um, I've got a memorable line here. Are you a sinner sometimes? Can't like that. Hmm. You got anything? Uh, no. Right, no. well, should we score it then? Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So, Ooh, yeah. Sorry, just one other thing. Mm. I've got a note here that they changed her clothes when they tied Liv Tyler up. Did you either of you get that? Oh, I didn't notice that. And I can't remember what she I watched this a couple of weeks ago, so I can't remember what she was wearing before, but in my head, it. Anyway. Yes, no, you're right, because she obviously they come back from the wedding <clears throat> and she's dressed up in like a nice, pretty dress, as it were, and then she goes down to her skivvies, yes. jeans, and shirt. And they put her back in the and dress. And then they put her back in the dress. Is that, that because of the, they've seen the ring, or or is that suggesting something more? I don't know. Well, it, it definitely plays up to the scene where they're both covered in blood, dying. She says, Yes, I will marry you. And he's yeah. like, Fuck's sake. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then just one other thing. Yeah. Why weren't the kids riding their bikes? Because uh, there's gaps uh, between the houses. It was a hot day and they were suffering and as they were in a little cruel saddle. <laughs> <laughs> and even that young. Yeah. They understand. All right, let's score it. So, performances. <laughs> Eight. With the five. Um, s- uh, seven. Effects win. Uh, effect six. There's a lot of effectiveness in it, so I'll go for six. Plot, sorry. Uh, actually, them saying based on a true story is in such fucking bad taste. Five. Five for me. Six. Rewatch factor. Uh, three. Zero. Four. Direction. Uh, six. They play, they make me second guess things. Uh, let's say six. I'll give it an eight. Cinematography, Lori. Uh, six. Eight. Six. Sound of music. Eight. Six. Uh, yeah, six again. Originality. Uh, five. Five. Eight. Enjoyability. Laurie. Um, it's okay. It definitely slumps in the third act. Six. Nine. Four. And life-changing, past or present, win. <clears throat> Zero. What did I learn? Uh, keep my battery on my phone charged. Uh, what you learn is yeah. if you're going to stay anywhere remote mm. pick a bungalow because uh-huh. if it's a big creepy house yeah. as always you're going to get murdered yeah right that's a one no that's three points then. Uh, that's a one for me right so I got 62 62 I gave it 44 oh, 44 Jesus 54 54 jeez hold on I need to write which gives us a rating yeah. of 53.3. 53.3. All right, so let's see where that puts it. 53.3. Puts it pretty low down, really. Um, it puts it below Dawn of the Dead, but above the Puppet Master. Um, uh, so uh, number 13 in the rating. Puppet so Master's if they had said yeah. this is based on a true story let's forget that yeah as a just a film on its own yeah I'm alright with it yeah it's, it's not as good as Puppet Master though damn it ah. <laughs> right well there we go that's wrong right should we move on then let's yeah. do that so the next film is Eden Lake that happy little horror. oh that cheeky little number so let's have a clip So Kat's boyfriend is taking her to Paris for the weekend, and my boyfriend's taking me to a disused quarry. At your first opportunity, turn around. (laughs) It's beautiful. Just find spot. I'm not gonna be bullied away by a bunch of twelve year olds. Hey guys, can you turn your sounds down? Go on here, mate. And what are you looking at? Are you looking at my tears? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jog on. <laughs> Steve, where's the beach bag? It's got the car keys in it. Alright, so um 
Let me give you some information about the film. It was released in 2008, directed by James Watkins, written by James Watkins, music by David Julian. Box office was $3.9 million. Um, I couldn't find anything about the budget. And it had Kelly Riley as Jenny Greengrass, Michael Fassbender, Steve Taylor, Jack O'Connell as Brett, James Glandy as Adam. And that's, that'll be it's got it. Thomas Turgoose. Yeah. Yeah. That's Cooper. Turgoose. All right. Um, lo- um, Laurie, give us a synopsis. All right, okay. So, a uh, couple of middle class... Oh, giggly. <laughs> uh, should we go away for a weekend? Yes, I'd love to. It's a surprise. And he's going to propose to her. So this is what I'm saying. This <laughs> it, was like two, it was like watching the English version of <laughs> yeah. The Strangers. It was yeah. really weird. Is, it, is this category 2008? I don't think so. It's like, don't propose. Yeah. <laughs> don't propose category. Anyway, he's going to propose to her. And they, he decides to do a little bit something, you know, we're not going to go to Venice. We're not going to go to Ben Bon Brothers. We're going to go to like a, a, a building development. A, a quarry. A quarry. But before, before the building takes place, it's actually a beautiful area. So I want to take you there, baby. Be slightly different. So they're driving in their car. They sing to the music. Giggling. Whoa. And they go into a town. And already, once you go into this town, you can slightly feel... A class issue um, or well, this is the way the film chooses to frame it it's a class issue where you know obviously they're slightly more ruffians a little bit more crass as it were but that's fine they overlook that and as they're making their way to this beautiful idyllic destination they, they have a few run-ins as it were and the I think the B&B that they stay over the night they get a feel of the local clientele anyway once they do finally arrive, they're there having a lovely moment, da da da, and then some young ruffians. Right, so once again, they've been terrorised by a group of <laughs> kids, basically. Yes. Yeah, but it slowly sort of builds up. They're not, I suppose they're not deliberately being picked on, but it's like a qu- quite a good thing about this film. There's sort of some natural kind of events that slowly start culminating, or whatever the word is. Yeah. So, when, when, when did you see? see it for the first time uh, when we watched it for this okay oh great I Ooh. saw it a few years ago I can't remember when but um, yeah I've seen it before Lloyd uh, it was probably when Love Film was all the rage 2008 yeah I think it was Love Film era wasn't it yeah 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 watched it and I poof ho ho right so first thoughts do we like it no 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 I well like is a wrong, wrong word for it really it's a horrible film is it? It's, it's a horrible film. It's a horrible did, film. Did I like it? Did it make my ass go up to my ear rolls? Yes, it did. Huh. Did I like it? Did I think it was a good film? Yes, I did. Very, very much so. I thought, I, crikey. Wow. I wasn't sure what it was trying to do. I wasn't sure what it was... You know, Have a stab. What do you think well, it was if, trying to do? So I think, if you look at that... I, it fe- felt like it was almost demonising... You were talking about the class system in the UK. is obviously a massive fucking thing still yeah to me its sole purpose was to demonise those who would be considered maybe of a lower social class yeah and that's 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 all it is designed to do and and generate fear of other yeah I don't think it's the escalation of yeah fucking violence in this yeah is I'm not saying it's impossible but yeah it just felt a mechanism to kind of go, if you're well-educated, middle to upper middle class, <laughs> yeah. don't go anywhere where there are people and ruffians and <laughs> people who like Burberry because but it, you'll get murdered. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, massively absolutely. does. And it was, I thought it was very impossible, really, how it escalated so quickly. But it's, this is the interesting thing about this. So like I say, you said first time you saw it, and I saw it, and I thought it was really, really good film. You know, horror awful scary as hell so you know like those horrible kind of horror films which I don't really actually would say are horror like Wolf Creek um, you know that kind of sort of real shit this is kind of in that genre oh, and mm. just uh, just not a nice experience 
but I really loved it. And my wife at the time, back in 2008, she's still your wife now, now, just to be clear. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> my <laughs> present wife still <laughs> likes it. Um, anyway, so yeah, she was really affected by it and hated it. And she's she's very scaredy catty. She doesn't like to go out in town at night or whatever. She's like a group of kids or whatever. She gets very nervous. And this film, that's it. On the second viewing, and if you do start actually thinking about it, it's like, whoa, this is full of bigotry. This is yeah. proper Daily Mail exactly paranoia right. yeah. kind of crap. However, is that something interesting to tap into? It kind of is in a way. They're playing with that. We're not actually playing. It's very blatant. And it's it's scary as hell. It is a nightmare. It is, it is, it that, is scary. It's that Definitely. Daily Mail nightmare. Yeah, but, but <laughs> I don't think it's interesting. It doesn't do it in an interesting way. I think they do it very, it's but if very look, well put together. But if you look at the resolution at the end, it's like, there, there's no... It, it is from a Daily Mail perspective, so they, they don't see the need to offer a counterpoint. Yeah, I'd like to say at like like, the end, though, oh, it's awful. so even they break away from the kids, so she goes to, like, yeah. suburbia... Oh, Oh, yeah. And then it's like, no, 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 it's the whole class. Yeah, you, everyone. You're screwed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, from a, the fundamentals of what he was trying to do, I, I agree with you completely that because it is based in reality and there's no supernatural boogeyman. Yeah. Boogeyman? Bogeyman. Boogeyman. Yeah, yeah. Coming in dark. I think the Americans call it boogeyman. There is a yeah. supernatural boogeyman. It's a, uh, <laughs> who is that? But, Barry White? <laughs> but because it is. There's no bogeyman. It is terrifying. Yeah. But because of the lack of sophistication in the... It's not trying to... It's just scaremongering type thing. Yeah, it's true. It loses all yeah. credibility in my eyes. Yeah. But that's the thing, I suppose. So let's, we're going to have to park that because you yeah. can get caught up yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah. Actually, as, as a film itself, though, I think the way it builds is pretty cool. The interplay with her. So she's a teacher. Um, and quite early on like let's say they're on the beach yeah and they're doing their thing and he's like oh just just ignore them just ignore them yeah and they're a group of kids drinking and yeah and you see a thought go across his mind and it's almost like he's gone actually whereas I would leave this I want to show her I want to kind of impress her so I'm going to have a word with these kids I'm going to try and go no I'm not having this so he does do exactly that and there's another couple of moments after it where they're driving along and they see the, the, the kids' bikes outside of his house yeah. and he's like, I'm going to knock on the door. And she's like, no, don't do it. And he goes, no, I am going to do this. So he's trying to sort of impress her because he's going to, he wants to propose. You know, he goes into the house. Exactly. He's a, what is that with people? He's, he's a that real man. Happen. That is quite a funny scene, but good. It's it good. Happens, but yeah. it's, it's good. I think there's a lot of impossible things. I've written some down here. Um, their trip was a disaster. Why didn't they just drive home? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Why didn't they leave the beach? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't even a beach. That's the other thing. Um, Brit- uh, British lakes are not like American lakes, and they try to they try to make out that a British lake that you know you could just go down there and sunbathe. It looked freezing, and it probably was freezing. <laughs> yeah. And it's supposed to be a disused quarry. Isn't yeah, it? like a lake at the bottom of a quarry, it looked massive as well. Yeah, yeah. This is back to your bit. Why? See, this is what's good about it. Um, you said you would just leave. Yeah. This is the, it's him. So he's going no. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, he wants to kind of impress her. I'm, I'm not, not going to be pushed around. Away, yeah. We're yeah. not going to be pushed around. We're going to tell them, we're going to show them, we're going to teach them that they need to learn okay. kind of manners. Would you walk around the stranger's home? <laughs> Just let yourself in. Yeah. Oh, I kind of allow it because it, it, it plays on that tension on that scene. So I don't mind it too much. It's and good. the last one, get in a bin or run into the woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> one of the things that pisses me off about this film is her. Her character yeah. is she. <clears throat> it's her fault he ends up dead. Because when she runs away and escapes, yeah. it's not that big a bloody wood. Yeah. So just run in that direction. You'll get to. It. Yeah. Before morning, you'll find a road. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there is. You there get some high question. shots, actually. No, but again, we're, we're not, we're not in America. No, you know, it's... but I'm talking about when she finds that bin bit, where she finds the map saying, you are here, yep. it shows the entirety of that, and you know, they're going, well, that's a mile max <laughs> to get out of this wood. Yeah. And yeah, you can get disoriented, I fully appreciate that. But she doesn't even try to get out of the wood. No. She sits and whimpers, and then, when she then goes back to the group. So, 
they've been harassed at the, the waterfront, mm. um, and then while they go off somewhere else, the kids steal his jeep. Yep. Yeah. And so he's trying to get his jeep back. They find them late at night, round a fire, with a badger under a, under a trolley. <laughs> <laughs> How do you trap a badger under a trolley? Uh, uh, that's just kid woodman. That's, that's just shits and giggles in this case. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. So we'll ignore the badger under a trolley. Um, he goes to get his keys, ask him for his keys back. Mm. They've got a dog, and it all escalates. The dog comes at him. Yep. And accidentally, he takes a knife off on the kids or yep. something, and the dog gets killed. Yeah. And that's where Jack and O'Connell's that's, character flips. That's, and that's, that's when that's it escalates. Him. So he yeah, tells yeah. him to fuck off, take the keys, fuck off, get out of here, you've killed my best. And you can tell, bad family life, dog is his everything. Yeah. And then he goes after them and captures them and all that kind of stuff. But it's just like, she is this portrayed as just this ridiculously shit character. It's like, go, run, I, stay and fight them. Like your point, fight or yeah. fight. Stay and do something. Yeah. Or go away and do something. Yeah. But stay and do nothing seems... A, you, you've just seen him bound up in barbed wire. This isn't going to end well. Go and do something. Yeah. And it, yeah. her character isn't written to be... I think I think the effect with the barbed wire was very good. Yeah. Um, and also what the cutting his scene. tongue was... What a yeah. scene. Yeah, just like cutting around in his mouth. I mean, there's some scenes that, like I say, that really pull your arsehole to... Yeah, you, you lip, yeah, your hair do. Yeah, that's the second I mean, I time you said that. The quality of the the acting, I think, is really good, and the the sort of the shots of the gore, like you say, with the, the cutting or whatever. Or there's this cut in the side of uh, Michael Fassbender as he's bleeding. Yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa! It's a real. It does really get you. Um, so that's I suppose those sort of experiences those feelings that's why when I first saw it really put it in that category of okay this is this is a good film but yeah it's, it's that whole sort of class thing that's the fundamental problem of it but um, I think the way it builds and that that whole sort of I don't know just I'll tell you what did work horribleness is just... it was it was filmed mostly in the daytime yes yeah but can you think of any other horror films that was made in the daytime Midsommar <laughs> which you hated stupid film <laughs> it's nice good film um, but yeah just that tying into you know the Jamie Bolger ooh that horrible satirical yeah the, you know and feral kids but that, that kind of the escalation from um, being a bit Larry on their bikes yeah being a bit Larry by the the Quarry Lake. Yes. Stealing a car. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. This, that's what. Yeah. Yeah. Chavs in inverted commas, which is what this is. Yeah. Let's is going get for. out the car. That's that's fear of children, though. Fear yeah. of children. That's okay. Uh, round a campfire with a dog, slightly aggressive dog. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. And then to binding in barbed wire, cutting his tongue, stabbing his side, killing him, and then necklacing the little kid with the the jam jar yeah putting a tie around his head filling yeah. it with petrol and setting fire to it Th- that's a fucking steep escalation of violence yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and but genuinely terrifying I, yeah. don't get me wrong yeah. but it just uh, in a but I <sighs> yeah see no I, I thought I was caught away with it because the adrenaline of him I don't know I, I can see it go but it is it, it, what's great and cool and terrifying about this film is that he is like you know your favourite the fear of children, but this is in a different way. The fear of feral <laughs> children, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, like what is it? A Lord of the Flies, that kind of. Well, it's stuff. quite current today with all the like knife gag crime and all that kind of stuff yeah. going on in the world. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Um, but I couldn't think of a when I was thinking of trying to think of a memorable scene. I couldn't pull one up, other than the horrible. One. <laughs> yeah, the the one where she um, runs over the girl. She kills Turgoose. Yeah, yeah. I can think of quite few. Esca- there are, I mean, there are for me. I think, I lots of memorable films. Yeah. The, the bit where, oh yeah, when he, the attacking Fassbender when he's bound to the tree. Yeah. And kind of yeah, or yeah. And videoing them so everybody's kind of complicit. 
when she's laying on the sofa covered in shit and yeah, bin piss, house and she... then she looks up at the wall and it's like, oh, great. And when they push yeah. her push her back into the toilet, yeah. Um, Jack O'Connell's acting, who plays Brett, he's the kid, I think he? he's like properly on par. Obviously, Fassbender's Chopsy, but Jack O'Connell is really, really good in this yeah, film. He's... he's really good. I've got my, um, a memorable line is, uh, I think, Fassbender says to them, watch your dog. Okay, you watch yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was brilliant. Right, should we score it then? Have we got to say everything we want to say? Yeah. I mean, the whole <coughs> fear of the working class, again, yeah. other films that kind of do the same thing, but definitely less Daily Mail. You had Deliverance, you remember that? Yeah. Remember with John Voight and uh, yeah, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, did yeah. a similar kind of thing. And then obviously Wolf Creek. So yeah. it is a thing, and this is the very, very British version of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, well, I think there's a nice link to um, uh, Zombieland as well. You pick up the Zombieland? No. Yeah, come on. So, cardio, really important that you're fit. Because if you go camping, <laughs> ah. you're gonna, somebody's going to try and murder you, you're going to have to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cardio. Oh, and belt up, because you're going to smash straight into a fucking yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go it. Performances. Window. Uh, performances, seven. Laurie? Nine. Nine. Effects. Laurie? Eight. Four. Six. Plot. Um, four. Five. Eight. Rewatch factor. Win. Zero. Six. Five. Direction. Laurie? Eight. Five. Five. Cinematography, four, six, seven. Sound of music, win, five. Uh, I can't remember too much of it. Uh, let's go six. Two. Originality, win, uh, five. Six, four. Enjoyability, Laurie. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's a weird one, isn't it? When you're yeah. absolutely hating it, but it's so... So, uh, yeah, uh, six. Three. Uh... Because of uh, Jack Jack Connell, is it? Jack O'Connell's performance. Yeah. I'm going to give it a one. Okay. A life changing past or present. One. Zero. Uh, four. Okay. So let's add up the scores. Can I just say before we do that? Yeah. Um, I was going to propose I put this on the rocks. I know, oh, we're, right. I know we're not allowed to ah, put our okay. choices on the rock. I tried it with critters and you wouldn't let me Yeah. But I, I just... Really be, didn't Because like of... It. My last thing on this was, what's the point? Mm. And I couldn't get past the Daily Mail bit. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That's, that's, that's very interesting. Right. But when so, you, that's what I'm saying, though. When you do that, and, you know, like, Wolf Creek's doing the same thing. Deliverance is doing something equally as rude and naughty and offensive. And you just... If you get caught up on that, yeah, it's kind of dead in the water. But as a film and how it feel, you know, how you can feel, and if you go with that fear, as I say, the fear of children stuff, the feral ch- stuff, it, it is good. It does work. Oh, right. effective. So let's do the scores. I've given it 42. I gave it 64. I've given it 40. Right. 64. So what does that give us, then? <laughs> Forty-eight point six. What? Forty-eight point six, which just puts it above blood on blood on Satan's claw, but below the puppet master. So two quite low scoring films this week. Blood on Satan's claw is that low? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think. Bloody yeah. hell! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys need to pull your socks out. Is that right? So we need to, uh, I think we need to choose some better films for next month. Let's, let's yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Right, yeah. is it, whose pick is it? Is it mine? Is it Laurie's? I think it's... I don't know. I, I feel like I haven't picked in a very long time, but I picked your... Yeah, no, you, no it's my pick. So it's your my pick, because you picked Golden Ticket. Yeah. Oh. Ah, bad, bad choice. Right, I'm going to no, pick them. you'll be fine. You're great at this. No, I said bad, bad luck to you, <laughs> not to Oh, me. right, okay. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's have a look. Rummage away. You should I be will. okay with your own ball bag. <laughs> I love it when you close your eyes then. I know. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. A 
86. 86. I didn't even know that went that high. 86, it's another year. Oh. oh. It is 1988. Alright, so I chose 1988. What have you got for me, guys? What could it be? You go first, will you, bum? Yeah? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for Beetlejuice. Aha! The yeah. Be- the Beetle guys. Um, okay, I've, damn it, I've actually got three now. Um... Oh, there's a lot of comedy in that. Um, but you've just done a comedy. So, I'll weigh it up. The Last Temptation of Christ, Martin Scorsese. Right. <clears throat> and, what? So I seem to be on a bit of a comedy bend here. Return of the Living Dead 2. Oh. Oh. Okay, so for me it's either a choice of Dead Ringers or They Live. So, I did Last Temptation of Christ, that's quite meaty. They live. So, John Carpenter's film, there's loads of great comedy in it, but it's also a very underrated John Carpenter film, They Live. All right, okay. I am going to go for Return of the Living Dead 2 and They Live. Um, Because I don't think I've seen Return of the Living Dead 2. I, I think I have. Uh, I really like Return of the Living Dead. Uh, that's fine. You know. they live. So there we go. That's it, guys. Cool. Um, so I'll see you next month. You will. And you can prepare all your Halloween treats. Oh, yeah. So, I mean... You, you can fill us in next month about what our Halloween special is all going to be about. Okay, yeah, all right. That'll be quiet. Great. All right. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Bye.